Today we geek out about dice summoners. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Lee with Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a game by Decking Awesome Games called Dice Summoners. Now this is a two-player game in which you are trying to build an army by summoning creatures, and then also using spells to attack your opponent and defeat your opponent ultimately. So we're going to take you over here, I'm going to give you a brief overview on how the game is played, and then we'll come back and I'll give you our thoughts on the game. All right, so this here is Dice Summoners. Now, first of all, this is a prototype copy of the game, so this is all subject to change, and for a, any kind of insight as to what the final version of the game will be like, definitely go check out the Kickstarter page. Uh, as you can see here, for example, these dice are stickered, and I would not expect the final version to have stickered dice, but definitely go check out the Kickstarter for more information. Now, this is set up for two players here. Here's player one and this is player two, and in the center here is the area that each player will be working from. Now the goal of the game is to be the first one to eliminate your opponent, and so you'll see here each player has a health marker, or a health card here, and you're going to start off with the health on 30, and you are going to work to whittle your opponent down to zero. Now there are three starter spells that each player will get. For example, here's starter set one, you see the basic summon and the learn spell here at the bottom, and there are three different ones, each with a different thing that they do. For example, um, you'll see here there's a cast thing with two little icons and a green, and that'll let you summon one advanced creature. Or here's these two icons, lets you cast one curse. And basically, as you're playing the game, when you roll these dice, they're going to give you certain icons. So you see here like this uh, circle with the line through it matches this here. So in order to cast this, you need to have two of these and a basic creature. Each player also starts out with three basic creatures. For example here, we have the griffin, and you see it has an ability of two here, two attack, and two defense. And for example, this one here, the succubus, has a three and a one, and you see here it shows a gain, now this is the type of dice that you get to roll for having this creature under your control. Now I've set the center up here with the, uh, the balanced deck setup and there are different deck setups that you could do that are in the instructions. This is just the best one that I found for when you're teaching the game. Um, like it says it's balanced and it, it's pretty, pretty evenly weighted here. Now when you play whoever goes first is going to go first like normal but the second player will get one extra die. So for example you see here we have three creatures that are going to give player one three blue dice. Now player two going second is going to get, since they have the same creatures, they'll get their three blue dice but they'll also get one more because they had to go second. Now there are these reference cards here, like here's one of them, that shows you what each of the symbols on the cards mean. And then there's also one here that shows the turn sequence of the game. So there's two, um, there's two stages to each turn. There's a gain stage and a combat stage. And those must be performed in order. Now for the gain stage, for player one, they have three level one creatures. So they will start out with three blue dice. And I'm gonna move these other dice out of the way here. And then player one may roll these dice. So if you see we rolled here, and each die has a symbol that we've rolled. So that is what our roll is for this turn. So that's it for stage one. Now stage two is the combat stage. And when you do combat, you are going to be able to do the abilities, the defend, or, as you see on the spells here, the cast action. Now, on your very first turn, you can only cast and defend. And that's just to give each player an opportunity to build up some defense. Otherwise, you'd be knocking down their strength on the very first turn. So now, if we look at what we rolled here, and again, I will show you there, those are the three symbols that we rolled. So player one can choose to do as many actions as there are dice able, so or that there are dice to be allocated. So in this case, I'm going to take a look at this uh, Ankylosaurus, and you see that they have the defend power that uses this icon, and it would give us three defense. So I'm going to play this character, and this would in turn, we have these defense tokens, and that gives me three defense to work off of as player one. Now with these other two dice, I'm going to go ahead and use a cast, and if I look here, this 
will let me summon one basic creature. So I have those same icons there. So I can exhaust these dice, put them here, and this will let me take one basic creature. So if I look at the top here, these are the two basic creatures that are available. And each one of them for my next turn will give me another blue dice to use. And in this case, I will take the Succubus, so that way I have a, a three attack. I'll be able to do some, some more damage next turn around because you'll see here, I'll have two of those. Now, one thing to remember, you may only ever have three creatures and three spell, or I'm sorry, six creatures and six spell sets at any given time. So if you ever were to draft a creature that were, would put you at seven, you would have to discard one of your other ones. So that would be the end of player one's turn. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of these dice here. Now note that you're always able to keep some dice until your next turn. So for example, let's say I only used one of my dice and I wanted to save these. I could save one or two level one dice and uh, up to two level two dice for your next turn. And if you save those, if I didn't use these, on my next turn when I got whatever was created, so I gain in that case four dice, I would be able to add these to that roll, but you'd have to use those that turn. So you would roll them right then and there. You wouldn't be able to hold them for like three, four, five turns down the road. So those over there. So now if we were to come to player two, let's go ahead and roll player two's dice. And you see they have four and they rolled <laughs> four of the exact same icons there. So what we'll do is use this one on the Succubus to gain one defense, and we'll use this one on the Griffin to gain two defense. And then with the last two here, I'm going to use this card, which if I cast this here, it lets me learn one spell set. So I will use these two dice, and I will learn an attack spell set. Now what this will do is, You'll see I have a fireball and a magic arrow that I'll be able to use on my next turn if I roll those symbols that I'll be able to attack my opponent with. So I'm gonna make some room here. And then that is the end of player two's turn. So we can clean up these dice here. And we can go at player one and we'll see we have four gains, so the gain stage, we get our four dice and we will roll them. And then let me show you how the attacking works. So we're going to use this symbol here on the succubus to do a three attack. Now this would do damage to the opponent unless um, they can respond with some defense token. So in this case, this would be three attack. Well, we have, oops, that bumped up there, but we have these three defense tokens that player, uh, player two can discard, and that would block that attack. Player one's going to use this uh, on this attack, which will attack for two. I have no defense here as player two, so I would take two damage, bringing me down to 28 health. And let's just stay on the offensive. I'll do this here, that'll be one more attack, so player two will have to take another one. And then we'll use this one to give player one an extra defense. So these dice have all been used. And now we will go over to player two's turn. Player two only has three dice that they're going to gain, so we'll roll these here. But it was still a pretty good roll. And this is where things get cool. So if you see, I rolled these symbols here. And on this card, spell set two here, the advanced summon power, you can cast that. And see how that has that little um, green icon? Well, that matches the icon on a level one creature. So see how that's there? So that means if you wanna cast this, you have to have these two dice and then you also have to discard uh, a level one creature. So in this case, it kinda of stinks because we're going to lose a creature of our choosing, at which case I'm going to pick, um, we'll pick the uh, Ankylosaurus here. Um, he's kinda of weak, he's got a good defense, but we wanna get rid of him. So we're just gonna discard him, set him off to the side. And then we get to pick an advanced creature of our, uh, of our choosing. And with this, I think I wanna choose one of these because they're gonna give me a red die. And we're gonna choose this one here. This is the hash mill. And if you look, it has this ability here. And this means that if I roll that symbol, I can heal three health. And this also is going to give me this red die, which is, ends up being a more powerful die. There's 
better options on here to activate more powerful things on the board. So that was the advanced summon. Now when you bring a creature in, you may immediately use their powers if you have a die, uh, a die facing that matches. In this case, we're going to use this to give us two shields here, two defense for next time. And then that's gonna be it for player two. Now if you look here on this um, mythic summon, it says here, learn one mythic ritual. Now this is pretty cool. If you can roll this, you would learn one mythic ritual. Now there are three mythic creatures on the board right now. If you look here, you would learn this, um, this mythic ritual. So this is, this lets you actually, if you learn this, you can then cast this later, and this would summon this mythic creature. So it's a super powerful creature, gives you a couple of red dice, but you have to do that in stages. So you would first have to summon this, the, uh, the ritual, and then you could summon the creature once you activate the ritual. Now there's also auras here. Now you can only ever have one of these per player, but these give you uh, extra little abilities that you can do uh, that helps ramp up the power of, of your characters. So there's, in this case, there's two here. There's uh, Fury and Insight. That's what I have out on the balance deck. But there are other ones in the, uh, in the other decks that you can build. But these are the, the two that you have to pick from when you play the balance deck. And then finally, there's also curses. Now, if you look at a curse, you'll see it says one, two, and three. If you cast a curse, it can only be there for three turns. So you're gonna rotate it as you, you know, as it's out there, and then you'll discard it after the three turns. And now you're gonna to continue to go back and forth, drafting creatures, learning spells, attacking your opponent, building your defense, until you bring your opponent's health to zero, or your opponent brings your health to zero, at which point the last person standing is the one who wins the game. And that, in a nutshell, is Dice Summoners. Now I'm gonna take you back up top and I'll give you my thoughts on the game. All right, guys, that was Dice Summoners. So let me start by saying again that that was a prototype copy of the game, and all art and components are subject to change. So if you want to know what that final product is going to look like, definitely go check out the Kickstarter page for more information. So let me start by talking about the presentation of the game. So I'll be honest that when I first set up the game and was getting ready to do a test run through, and I set all the cards out on the table before me, I thought, there's going to be a lot of, to have to ingest and to understand here, because there felt like there was a lot going on. But as soon as I correlated the rules with the cards, I realized that it's really, really easy to understand. The cards are very well laid out. Everything is really simplistic as far as the understanding goes, where you're matching dice symbols and everything else is, uses a very clear iconography, either by um, shape and color. So that way you could just at a glance see, okay, if I take that card, I'm gonna get a blue die. Uh, that card over there is my basic creatures, that's a spell. And it was really easy to understand and get to the table. I felt that given the initial presentation of the game, that the gameplay itself was very easy to pick up. This game is easy to understand, it's easy to teach, and once you get through basically one round of teaching with somebody, you can really hit the ground running. And then from there, it's just enjoying the experience, and then becoming more skilled in it, knowing ahead of time maybe what way you want to build, how your opponent plays, if you want to play off of what they're doing. If, you, if you're playing an opponent that's overly aggressive, you could try to you know, take down their defense sooner if they're not being overly defensive. There, there's so much to the gameplay. But the game itself is not a heavy game. This is a light game at its core. And as such, I think the audience is fairly wide open. A casual gamer that's familiar with like a Magic or a Star Wars dice game or anything like that is going to be able to pick up this game very easily. I was really impressed with the amount of replayability that they packed into the box. So because there are so many different deck options that you can build, based on what you want your play style to be, and it really freshens things up. All in all, I really enjoyed this game. This game I felt offered a lot for the small footprint and how easy it was to pick up. Ton of replayability, easy to just break out, and bottom line to it is it was just fun. We had a lot of fun with this game. And I think that if you are a fan of any kind of 1v1 games, uh, I would definitely check out this game. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Lee with Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please comment down below, subscribe, share this video, all that stuff. Check us out on Facebook, the Grams of Insta, uh, Twitter. We like to tweet, tweet a lot. And uh, just g interact with us. We'd like to get to know you guys and we'd like to chit chat with you guys out there. So again, thanks for hanging out with us. I'm Lee and we will catch you next time.